All right, welcome back, MechWarriors. So we are looking at basing now. Um, we've got a plain base that we snipped the uh, Battlemaster off from in our first uh, first segment. Um, we've got some glue, hobby knife. Um, I've got a spare base. We may uh, may work on our other uh, other mech while we're letting the glue dry on our uh, on our Battlemaster's base. So. Uh, a couple other items I've got here as well. I've got an old brush for uh, putting on some PVA glue. I've got said PVA glue here. Uh, I've also got a bowl of sand. Uh, a couple different types of sand. I usually mix about three different types. Um, you can get this kind of granular like ballasts, ballast I believe it's called, from uh, hobby stores um, or like train train stores. You can get it. Woodland Scenics carries it, a bunch of other brands as well. I just, I, I mix it all up into one kind of tub here to simulate um, a more realistic kind of earth texture. Uh, instead of using just like one one generic shape, or one, one type of sand that looks kind of fake. Um, there's also things like this uh, coarse pumice gel you can use. I use that quite a bit as well. That you would just scoop and kind of goop onto the base. That does a good job of mimicking uh, dirt or earth as well. There are lots of uh, other texture paste from Vallejo and other brands that I use too. Just to, it depends on what kind of, um, well, color doesn't matter so much. You can always prime over top of it, but whatever kind of texture and finish you're looking for. And those, those things last for a long time. You could do a, a, you know, a full army or two easily. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about is basing bits. Originally, I wasn't planning on using them. Um, I was going to try and, you know, use some plastic card or some brass rod and simulate, uh, some kind of urban urban warfare area. But um, Epic Basing actually just came out with a new line. Um, you can print it at home or you can just buy it and they'll mail it to you. They'll print it themselves. So this stuff's fantastic. There's the, we, have, uh, we have steel girders uh, with little bits of rebar. Um, we have, like, look at this, like this exposed concrete pillar with rebar in it. Like, that's awesome. That's sweet. I can't, I can't wait to to see these. I saw they were brand new on the website when I was poking around, so I immediately bought all the files and I'm just I'm just excited to, to use these. I got I got to pick a force now. Got to make a whole company using these got using these uh basing bits. Yes, yeah, so you got like corrugated metal in there. You got some I-beams, concrete, sweet stuff. Um what I do is anytime I, I see a cool basing thing from them that I like, uh I I buy the file, I print a ton of them. I print it in a different color so I can just throw it in, in little bins in my uh, my basing storage thing. But we've got trees and kind of dragon glass, I think they call it, like obsidian. Tons of different kinds of trees. I think I've got three or four versions of the trees, um, but there are four or five more, I believe. We've got like hoodoo pillars. Uh, we've got tourmaline rocks or tourmaline crystals. I've been using them for terrain. You can print them up like big, big size for terrain. And then these kind of like big spiky guys as well. So fantastic stuff. You can, you know, if you want to use them, they add a lot. You don't have to use them. You could uh, put together your own kind of basing scheme with with stuff you can get from your hobby store or even even outside. Go break some sticks and throw them on your base. <laughs> so uh, he's still mounted on his cork because we just finished the oil wash removal. I don't want to matte varnish him yet, so we're not going to pull him off of his base yet. So he's going to sit off to the side. What I do have is a bonus battle master. Uh, that I practiced the cockpit on. This is actually getting stripped and going back to to a friend. Um, he gave me the Battle Master we painted up uh, in the blue scheme. So we're going to be using the feet from this one to place things. And I think we're actually going to uh, we're going to give him this this shiny base from our Battle Master. We're going to give that back to my to my friend because he was so nice to supply us with a, a fresh Battle Master. So. Because I had this guy glued down, or I guess factory glued down when I, when I got it, I can see where his uh, where his feet are, which is huge. That's awesome. Um, doing the berserker over here, I can't I can't see where his feet go. I could hold the base up, kind of like this, you know, stick it underneath him like that, and kind of gauge roughly where I'm putting stuff. I also I use acrylic flat bases that I just get cut, so I, I just scar them up so things stick to them. Otherwise, it's a little bit too smooth of a surface. But because I can't tell how far spaced out his feet are, I've got to kind of take him off of his his brass rod once he's all done, and then use him to kind of pick where I want to put stuff. Because this guy here is already off of his base, uh, I can just drop him into the footings there, and I've already kind of picked out. I picked a pile of cement blocks or cement rubble. 
and uh, and then I've also picked um, this kind of this kind of wall. It's a concrete wall here. Let's uh, we'll glue them down, and then I can hold it up and, and show you. So so this little wall section here, this is this looks great. It's got little rebar pieces coming out of it. Uh, we'll do a kind of a dirty, beat up cement, like a weathered uh, concrete kind of look there. So it does have a smooth bottom uh, for me printing it. I'm just going to scratch it up so that the uh, super glue has something to adhere to. If you're building pewter models or if you're building resin models or even plastic ones that you can't use plastic glue on, um, always try and scratch up your surfaces so you can um, so you can have nice adherence. See, I guess I'm thinking though he's sitting like. Let's move this up further. So if he's sitting like this, do they really have? That's like right at the corner. That seems kind of goofy, doesn't it? Like you never want, like if you're, when you're playing a game, you never want to have the the point of your model sticking out like that. It seems off. And maybe if I spin it like this, if I spin around, is that still the same issue? Yeah, it's weird. Like it definitely came that way. I don't know. Either way, that's kind of kind of garbage. <clears throat> so maybe we're uh, maybe we got to spin it ourselves a little bit here. Seems so. All right. So we're going to because uh, I want I want to have the flat front for look, looking forward. All right. So uh, we're going to scar up this piece as well. We'll glue them down. And then we're gonna have to give it a minute or two just for the uh, super glue to set. So the reason I'm, I'm okay using this kind of dirty, dirty base that I've already put some some effects onto and then pulled it off is because I I, I don't want a flat uniform base. Um, usually I would put like some green stuff or something like that. So let's just drop this on here and let it set. I would use some green stuff or some uh, epoxy putty or something to make it so the surface is not just like a smooth, smooth level surface. I want like some, like a raised bit like that kind of idea. I want some, some texture in the, in the terrain. You can build it with, with sand. Like you can just kind of heap sand up on top of itself and then and that's usually fine, but I find it's easier just to have it be a physical, physically raised. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. He's gonna sit like that. I know it's not very exciting to look at from the top down, but I can't pick it up until the glue set. So, but now we've got a spot for his feet to sit. The flat front is facing forward. And then this kind of debris and like kind of cut etchings I've made with the knife when I was hacking them off are actually perfect. They're gonna work for us. They're gonna make it so it's not a flat uniform surface there. Um, we will need to wait a couple minutes for that to uh, to dry, and I think instead of doing kind of two small segments for this, I'm just gonna hack this guy off of his base because we can we can just varnish him when he's on his finished base. So yeah, so I, that's why I like using these cork things. When you finish them to the point where you don't need the cork anymore, and then you just cut the brass rod off, and he's got this handy little little rod sticking out of his foot that we can now use to mount. Mount onto something. Okay, so um, I want to place this guy something like that, and then I want to have. Let's pick out a little a little tray of goodies. Uh, I really like these like piles of of uh, beams and girders and stuff like that, but I don't. I just don't know if I want to paint that necessarily right now. Today or tomorrow. Not quite in the mood to do all those different metal colors. And then these beams, they look nice, but they're a little, little tall, I guess. I, you, I scale them up and down. You can, I think they probably just come in one size on the website. You might be able to, to pick. I'd, I really want to use this, this, uh, this concrete pillar here with the, the cement, cement rubble at the bottom and the rebar. So I think if I put it in the middle like that, it looks kind of goofy. It's maybe better on the back. And then his feet like that. So he's looking forward. We've got our flat edge forward. And get a pile of rubble. 
Maybe not the same pile of rubble we've already used for that guy. Something like this. Yeah. I think that looks nice. It's visually interesting. Okay. So the same thing, we're gonna just scar up the bottom of our just do that in frame. Come on, Phil. Okay. Same thing. Crosswise. Kind of hatch it across again. I've already scratched up my base. Just feel it. And make sure it is the rough top layer. Yep. Yeah, I do love the <clears throat> the availability of these things. That was just fantastic compared to what it used to be. Actually, we'll throw another one back there too. So you wouldn't normally see one pillar by itself. I know it's just one small section pulled out of a giant urban battlefield, but. We still want to convey a little busier. So before it completely dries, let me just make sure that that does fit. And he's a big guy. He's he's real solid. Okay, yeah, I think that's fine. It's a little 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 tight, but I think that's okay. <clears throat> Groovy. So now our hopefully our battlemaster base is solid. Let me just, yep, I think it's set enough that we can play with it. Okay, so we've got our <clears throat> sand bin over here, and we've got our glue. I would recommend getting a small bottle of glue and then just refilling it. I've got a big, giant, like, four-liter tub of PV, or uh, is it PLA? White glue that I use. And I would rather use a small bottle just because it's easier to, to apply. So we're just going to squirt some out. I don't need a ton. I just need a little enough that it's a, a thin layer for it to stick to. So what we're going to do is we're going to do PLA. We're going to drop it in the sand. We're going to get some kind of texture happening with the sand. Um, what I mean, I, I guess maybe not so much texture, but we're going to get some volume happening. So it's not just one flat layer. We'll get some, some kind of peaks and valleys. Um, but I do, yeah. So I'm gonna spread it all around. And I'm gonna put it even on the, uh, so it's wet. I'm just gonna wet my brush a little bit so I can push around. And this is just my old, I use this for mixing paint for gobbling on stuff, and textures and stuff like that. And mud effects, resin effects. As long as I clean it out, it stays fairly usable. So we're just throwing this down everywhere. We're gonna stick our our battlemaster, our non-blue battlemaster on the base. Again, you wouldn't usually have two two mechs to to play with when you're doing your bases, but we do. So we're gonna use them. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just pulling off the, the glue, clean that brush out. You can also paint what I sometimes do is when it's uh before it's paint, painted or primed, I'll paint the feet, and then while the paint's wet, I'll I'll Stick it on the base in place. That'll, that'll pull it off, and then you have painted feet showing you exactly where it's going to be standing. So we are going to do this. I'm just going to hold them, hold them on his base, so we don't get as much sand built up. Oh man, there we go. All right. So normally I would dip him in there. Um, Normally I would glue them on his base and I would dip them in there with the base glued on. But we can't do that because he's uh, he's not the model we're going to be leaving on there. So I'm just going to be dumping dumping the sand on there. So I've got to kind of spin them around. Awkward view, unfortunately, but there you go. I'm going to kind of shake it off a little bit. So yeah, because of the different types of sand we have in here, it's... Uh, it's going to simulate fairly realistic looking earth. And I'm just going to pop them gently off the base. There you go. So I've still got my, my foot crevices in there. Perfect. That can dry as is with a little bit of white glue in there. I'm not bothered by that. I can always touch it up with some, uh, some texture effect or something later if, I, if it looks goofy. But at least now he's got some footprints that he's going to be having the feet sit into. So he's not going to be up on top of the sand. Because that guy's going in the strip bucket anyway, we don't care. Uh, yeah, perfect. I'm going to 
we'll let that sit for a little bit. What we will do is I'm going to grab a little jar. Actually, maybe we'll even just use this one right here. So we're going to take a little bit, a little bit of glue. This is just our inverted GW base that we were using for the decals. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here. And then we're going to mix it with some water. So what I, what I generally do is I'll put the glue down. I'll put the sand on top of the glue. Then I, I'm going to get a mixture like this of PVA, PVA, there we go, not PLA. So we're mixing water and PVA here. And this is just to help it set in place. So right now you've got a layer of sand that's touching the glue on the bottom. And that's great, that's going to hold its place. But all the sand that's sitting on top is going to be loose still. We can probably put some more glue in there. Um, if you're doing a large base, like a big model, I would add a little bit of uh, dish soap, actually just a tiny bit of dish soap. Um, and that breaks the, um, kind of the, what is it? What's the term for it? Tension something? Hmm. I've got a brain blank. The, uh, you know when you have like a, a droplet of water or like you pour something to the very, very top of a glass and then the like, uh, the tension of the, of the liquid at the, at the top of it keeps it from pouring over the edge. Uh, it'll just negate that. So what that'll mean is it'll, it'll spread throughout all the sand instead of just kind of like drop, dropping it like a droplet and being wet. Like a, like a small, small drops like that, it's going to spread out, spread out a lot more. All right, we've got a little bit of a mixture going there. So we will, let's move this off to the side. I'll do the same thing with that guy after. So we're going to pull up in our pipette a little bit of this glue and water combination, and we're just going to drop it down. And it's going to seep in and soak into the, the sand and it's going to help set it in place. So I'll do two passes like this. So I'll, uh, I'll put the PVA down. I'll dump the base in the sand. I'll get it all, uh, all stuck to the very bottom. Then I'll immediately put this PVA water mixture on top. I'll come back an hour or two later. It'll, uh, it'll have dried and then I can do another pass. And then by that point, I'm not worried about the sand being disturbed, even if I'm like heavily dry brushing or something. It's going to be locked in place. And that would be a good time too if I had, uh, if I wanted to grab like a piece of that corrugated metal or something effect that they've got in the uh, the pack or oh, the 3D print files. You could grab some of that as well and throw it on, and it would look really nice. Just stick it in; it'll dry in the sand. So perfect. Yeah, we're going to let this dry. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing again, not going to film that. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. And then we're going to spray prime it black. And then we will uh, pick some colors. We'll look at, uh, look at the artwork and kind of pick a color that contrasts nicely with our, with our base and our finished guy. I'm just going to clean off the, clean off the glue that's on the sides so it's not making a big mess. We're going to paint over those sides black anyway before we're done, but cleaner you are throughout your operation, the easier it is. And that glue just loves to seep off. There you go. Awesome. So that'll look good. That'll look nice and imposing up there. All right. So we will see you guys next one for some more work on the base and some uh, weapon glow effects.